Hi, my name is Rob Carolina, and in this webinar, I want to introduce you to the Law and Regulation Knowledge Area of CYBOC. In the webinar, I'm going to try to give you a basic introduction to the knowledge area. I want to explain how topics were chosen, give you some guidance on how to make best use of the material, and a very brief overview of the subjects addressed. For those of you who may have found this video without context, this knowledge area is part of a much larger project, the Cybersecurity Body of Knowledge. It forms one of 19 knowledge areas, and the entire CYBOC project report, as well as this knowledge area, are available to download for free. Here's the table of contents for the knowledge area, and I'll be talking through each of these up to section 14. So let's begin with the introduction. In assembling the topics for this knowledge area, I faced three challenges, universality, scope, and accessibility. On universality, CYBOC is meant to be presented to practitioners all around the world. Science and mathematics, as subjects, are universal. You're always trying to describe universal truth. But law and regulation, well, they're local. They differ from place to place. Secondly, scope. There's a very broad array of activities that are identified as security practice. And because the scope of activity is so broad, it tends to trigger an interest in a lot of different areas of law. Now, not all of them will be significant to every practitioner. I know some practitioners who are only concerned about one or two of these areas of law. Finally, accessibility. A real challenge in assembling this material is how to make law and regulation as a topic accessible to people who haven't previously studied law. I took the approach of creating a high-level overview of reviewing branches of law that would influence practitioner responsibility, practitioner liability, and degrees of freedom in operation. I've tried to identify some generalizable legal norms legal frameworks or legal principles that most places around the world would mostly recognize, as well as introduce issues of professional responsibility and ethics. I want to give you a framework for thinking about law. It is a discipline that is different in terms of how we conduct research and how we synthesize information. I want to help identify issues that may be of concern to practitioners and provide guidance on how to search for answers. Finally, I'm trying to describe the law as it is, not as people wish it would be. What's out of scope? I left out subjects that, although they may be important to some practitioners, they're really difficult to generalize for a global audience. Rules of evidence used by courts, similarly rules of civil procedure and criminal procedure, and criminal content laws. In each of these areas, rules tend to be very highly parochial, which is to say they don't translate well from place to place. So if we look specifically at rules of evidence, for example, if you're a forensic investigator in a particular place working with a police department, you will need to become very familiar with the rules of evidence of the place where you actually work as a policeman. But those rules might be different and will be different in other places around the world. Forensic techniques, forensic technologies, might be more widely applicable, but specific rules, well, more difficult. So I did not cover those in any detail. How to use the knowledge area? First, have a look at some key definitions. They don't always mean what you think they mean when you're talking to a lawyer. Especially look at the definitions of person, legal person, natural person. Look at the definition of state and territory, legal action and right of action. Then read the introduction. Read sections 1 and 2. No matter what your interest area is, sections 1 and 2 will help to orient you more generally to how lawyers think about law and how law applies in a multinational environment. Then have a look at whatever parts of sections 3 through 12 are most applicable to your practice needs. Each of these are meant to be roadmaps that should help you search for better answers and ask better questions. Hopefully, they'll help you understand and apply the answers that you find. Finally, everyone, I believe, should 
read sections 13 and 14. Section 13, because practitioner ethics are an important topic and they're becoming only more important as time goes on. And section 14, because I'm trying to give you some basic highlights on how to think about legal risk management. A note on terminology. In this Cybok knowledge area, Alice and Bob refer to persons, not devices. Second, please read the endnotes. There's more than 10 pages of endnotes in this knowledge area, and they're important because they don't just serve as sources of authority. They're also meant to give you, in some cases, I've used them to give you examples of how to interpret the language of the knowledge area. I've also used them to give you counterexamples. Because in law, very often it's important not just to find what we think of as the answer. You also have to find out, well, some people disagree with this, and how strong is that disagreement, or how might a disagreement apply? So the end notes are incredibly important to help inform your understanding of what's written in the main body of the text. Do not ignore them. Finally, use the references cited for further and deeper research. Let's look at some...